Hi everybody, I'm going to attempt to do an analysis and a discussion giving my theories, all that stuff for the new KH3 trailer without this taking a half hour. I have to wonder. I have to wonder, right? <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be the Kingdom Hearts 3 Final Battle trailer. Let's uh, jump into it right now. They can take your world. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I noticed something immediately. Look at that! He's got multiple of his Keyblades. Like he's gonna summon... Dude, that's gonna be 12 Keyblades around him. And he's gonna shoot it. Oh my god. This is gonna be so great. So, he's summoning Kingdom Hearts there. And throughout this, Sora is clearly giving his opening monologue. Uh, at the start of KH3. Like in KH1, is anything real or not? Or KH2, I want to line the pieces up, yours and mine. It, we're getting our own quote for this game, of course. They can take your heart. They're infecting Kingdom Hearts. Aqua is being corrupted. What I assume are 13 large pillars. Hold on. Demix. <laughs> you can see his, you can see his sitar. Everyone else, you can count, you, I bet you could zoom in and guess, like, uh, Lark scene, uh, Psyx, maybe. That that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go that deep in that stuff, because I think that's a little insane. Uh, Luxord. Uh, <laughs> it looks blonde. It's from a distance. All right, so now we get some Disney sequences set to face my fears to ensure this video will not be monetized. Uh, <laughs> uh, chaos. Uh, chaos is just raining down. And by chaos, I mean... Fire Heartless, you can see their shapes. If you played 0.2, you know you know these Fire Heartless are like the hardest hitting normal enemy in the game. Shut down by Blizzard. Chaos is happening in the Monsters Inc. world. Uh, a dark dimension is trying to eat Buzz Lightyear. Likely started by young Xehanort. Uh, the Tangled... Rapunzel's right... I called her Tangled. I'm going to be watching this movie for a podcast this week. Uh, link to that podcast in the description if you like KH3. Um, sequences from Tangled, which look cool. Winnie the Pooh, which is good. He's like, hey man, Scrooge McDuck! Scrooge McDuck in Twilight Town. This pretty much confirms to me that Twilight Town's the hub and we probably don't go to Radiant Garden in this game. Because if the final battle trailer still hasn't shown it to us, I think it's out and they're... Basically doing a big expansion of Twilight Town, which I guess is okay. I, I, have a, I have a lot of love and reference for the Hollow Bastion, Radiant Garden, and, you know, Final Fantasy characters. But hey, I get, I, I, I've, I'm kind of going to accept that none of that's going to be in, but we'll see. Uh, Remy is here. I'm guessing Scrooge is introducing us to the restaurant. Maybe he owns it. And he's like, oh, you can get this guy to cook with you. Eat a potato! <laughs> uh... Uh, rest in peace, Scrooge's old voice actor. I've taken over. I mean, granted, he did pass. Uh, I'm not voicing him. Uh, we have a shop over there. NPCs everywhere. God, this game's gonna be so good. He's like, hey, what's up, rat? Uh, we have Let It Go, which, given the way she's acting, I, they might just do Let It Go. It'd be great if they, like, Disney gave them the voice track. Or they had, I think her name is Adina Menzel, I believe. And they said, hey, just sing it again. Just sing it again, you know? Because I feel like KH3 is going to capitalize on that. Uh, I haven't seen Frozen, but it sounds like some fucked up shit happens to wh whatever that girl's name is. I'm going to be watching it uh, probably in the next few weeks, so I'm excited. Got to catch up. I'm watching all the movies before KH3 comes out. The climax of Pirates right here. Having an actual convincing fight. I hope they fucking include the scene in Pirates 3 where Davy Jones, like, phases through, like, a fucking wheel on the ship. <laughs> and, and, then, and then he goes, Arr! And Jack goes, Ah! It's the fucking dumbest slapstick shit that does not fit at the end of that movie, and I love it. Uh, sorry, I'm talking too much about that. These are a lot of sequences of, like, climaxes of Disney worlds. We get the Baymax stuff, we get this, which is a Stitch summon called Plasma Encounter. You have Plasma Surge, Jump, and Cancel. Seems like you make walls and shoot energy. We already knew about the Stitch summon, because, like, last week, 
they showed a bunch of screenshots and renders on the Kingdom Hearts Twitter account and through their press site, which uh, looked really cool. But excited to see it, at the very least, in footage. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that I noticed uh, on a second rewatch is if you look right here, uh, if right behind him, Sniper Heartless. Or not Sniper Heartless, Sniper Nobodies, um, which look cool. Uh, Zigbar's tried and true. Uh, excited to see uh, them being included. I believe they're also in the TGS trailer, but we get a better look at them here. Uh, I want to go through this quickly because there's so much to unpack in the back half. Uh, here, our very first uh, viewing of what everyone expected. Playable Riku. This has to be later in the game, though, because uh, he has his new haircut. We know he starts with his uh, drastically bad uh, short hair, but I'm really tall haircut that, n that I, I haven't seen anyone like that. Like, long hair Riku's still the goat, but this is still pretty great. Uh, ooh, there. hold on. Frame by frame. Dark Fyraga. He has his own situation commands, which is really cool. Uh, and just, he's fighting a demon tower. He has Braveheart, his new Keyblade, because the other one is broken. And Dark Fyraga looks like that. He shoots like a cluster of blasts, does a good amount of damage. Excited to see how much of a terror this enemy type is going to be compared to 0 0.2. Actually, he just wrecked it, so who knows? Uh, it immediately after that cuts toward the Remy Keyblade, the Ratatouille Keyblade, which looks to just be an Eiffel Tower with wine bottles at the bottom. Remy at the top with a uh, wooden spoon uh, standing atop uh, what looks to be a faucet. Chef's hat thing looks really good. Like, I'm really down with that with a frying pan transformation, which I, I believe on the bottom for a moment after cooking it has his symbol. This is so cool. Because you know there's not a Ratatouille world. He's in Twilight Town. Which means that doing his side content will reward you with something that's worth it. A Keyblade that's completely unique with its own transformation. That you just cook the fucking slam the fuck out of these enemies. A boom! <laughs> I'm having so much fun today. I'm, I'm, I'm thriving, guys. Thriving. So here we get to see some minigame stuff for, I think, two or three of them. That are flan related. So we got the Flan Heartless. Uh, the co-director of the game, uh, Ty, said that there would be Flan Heartless or dessert-related ones throughout the game that would give you mini-game challenges for items and stuff. And this is one of them, where you're on teacups, uh, we're spinning around, I guess, collecting them. We're earning a score. We're doing it within a time limit. Of course, Toy Story World. Uh, hold on! That's a giant flan on a giant strawberry! <laughs> I get excited over the shit that matters. I'm sorry. Uh, this one here is... Oh, Sora's going down here in the cannons. This is poor Royal! This is like the very... Be this is the very first zone from KH2 of uh, the Pirate's World. Rem I remember the cannons. I remember the, the this thing here, the bell. So you go up here and you're shooting these guys. And I imagine you want to hit the big one for the extra score. You want to take his watermelon so then you will have infinite power... So good. And then we have this where you're bouncing off bigger flans to get to other buildings in San Francisco, really showing the scale of this game. I'm going to cry again because it's the best shit in the world. We have this rhythm game where you're dancing with the NPCs. You can spin, step, and clap. Uh, some of the NPCs kind of look like a foot, but they exist, and that's better than what we've ever gotten for the most part. Uh, Sora is breakdancing on a barrel because he's the greatest Chad of all time. We have a mini boss against this, like, chariot thing with, um, like, little ramparts or what, what like, little castles on it. Uh, overall, this design is awesome. Two, he two health bars, two extra health bars there. We got some stuff going. Uh, uh, another thing I'd like to point out is, of course, the rage, the rage form we have there. Which, I, I have to wonder what that is. What, whether or not that is related or not to... Whether or not that's, like, related to, uh... Hmm. Like, like a Rapunzel, like, limit? Or if that's, like, something new? Again, we probably won't know. That's a, just another case of, unfortunately, something's on screen there, and a 
people who obsess like us are going to have to wonder about it. I'm, I'm also distracting you because my audio died. We fixed it. So he goes in, he, he goes in and hits us, it looks like there. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are like, what are the gameplay implications? Uh, did this look fine? Uh, I'm sorry, I like video games, I don't care. <laughs> We're going down into the water. Holy fuck, I did not see this when I watched it the second time. Sea Fire, Sea Blizzard, Sea Thunder. You have completely different magic types. Sea Fire. Fire will work in the water. But more importantly, we get to see what Sea Blizzard looks like. Also, your focus bar is disabled in the water. We have a boss here. At least I hope it's a boss. Look at that health. Uh, sea Blizzard, like, spiders off in different directions, which looks really cool. Then we get to see this. This is totally the Monsters, Inc. area. If you look at these areas around here, looks really cool. Uh, but we're in the Gigas, so it looks like they'll be using the mechs in different other worlds. This seems to be a minigame related one, because we have a chain, we have points, a score, and a timer. Which is also interesting. Uh, you'll notice we have some sort of mission here. Because if we go back two frames, you see this right here. This is our might be our target. We got uh, we got a little little signal there. We got a lot of HUD stuff, which is interesting. It then goes to the Davy Jones boss fight where we uh, we're, we're like mid animation. Now now it looks like he's frozen in time. Some people might be worried like oh no what why is it like glitching up? Uh, it looks like time really kind of freezes around you when you transform, so since he's making the high wind, it freezes him and lets him get some extra damage in. Monsters Inc. boss we have here, with, uh, this, like, gelatinous darkness that looks really cool that I imagine Vanitas has something to do with. Uh, we're running up here and taking on this, like, this serpent tree boss that has exploding, like, exploding fruit. And then we have the Battle of the 10,000 Heartless, 10,000 Nobodies, 10,000 Unversed, or whatever's going on here. That has an enemy meter that I don't know if it rises or lowers depending on your kills. Uh, we're using the Mirage Staff. And Trinity Guard is available, which I imagine is uh, something we can do here. I don't know if it's specific to this fight, though. Uh, impressive is, is what I can say there. They fade out. And... Uh, in case people were wondering, this is CG. Uh, they, like, what they've been doing with the CG in this game is trying to make it match the game's uh, graphics and overall visual style. So, that way it's less jarring whenever they do a CG sequence in this game. Uh, it actually kind of kind of looks like the game. And also the fact, this is KH2 Kyrie. So we get a couple of scenes like this. So she gets to cut her hair and she gets to put on the outfit that isn't this mess. <laughs> The, you know, and she's like, we're getting in the ring, which uh, implies that they may have a sparring match, which I think is cool. More ice cream, because yes, of course, it must be everywhere. Given the fact that she's in this outfit, I think means that uh, we might have a playable section with her uh, the following day when she's all, like, uh, updated. There seems to be some sort of paper there, so maybe there's some instructions from Merlin, because Merlin was the one assisting them. Don't hold back, Lee. Promise? Uh and then, of course, Don't Hold Back Lee Promise, which was the, uh... That's exactly what Shion said when, uh... She was fighting Axel for real. Uh, during the climax of days. So, Shion, Shion being there, I think, is pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, we have this Dark Dimension stuff in Toy Story again. And, uh... The attacks go straight through young, young Xehanort, which is interesting. And then, then we have uh, Sags like, I'd, hey, if we invited you back and you didn't do our thing. Into our ranks, only for you to fail to deliver our final vessel. So, um, here's the thing. At first I was thinking this was Shion. Um, but I have to wonder, like, who it is. Because normally the, the female characters have, like, a more pointed shoe. But then I'm also thinking, oh, fuck, Shion, like, turns into different fucking characters. So... So maybe it's like Sora? Maybe it's like Shion in a Sora form? There is infinite potential with this right here! Infinite. 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 Don't lure me. I don't care. <laughs> so, so here's the moment where, where Benita is like, Dude, what the fuck do you think I'm doing? Alright, I'm, 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 I'm a strong man. Ventus, get back in my heart! 
with mine. Just with so we have that moment there. We, have, of course, have this right here where Maleficent's talking about the Keyblade Wars happening. He's, and Pete's like, where the fuck's... Where's the box? And, uh, and of course, in Twilight Town. Where are we supposed to be looking? A Keyblade War is upon us. Haven't you already learned how to restore someone's heart after it's been lost? Uh, th th there's barely anything I can comment on this besides, we don't know, out of context. In time, I awaken to a new purpose. Uh, I like this idea. Looks like he's trying to give Sykes ice cream. <laughs> like, cause, like, he's got two. Which is pretty neat. Um, ima imagine he's, like, waiting for Kyrie and instead it's his old friend. Uh, I, I, this was the most intriguing thing for me even when Dream Drop Distance came out, which was... How does this particular uh, thread end? And I'm really excited to see it. I I imagine I imagine Sykes doesn't get out of it, but maybe hopefully if he if he ends up dying, it will at least he'll find some sort of peace or closure with his old friend. Kyrie's right. We're all in this together, Sora. Yeah. Does that confirm a High School Musical world? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you like whenever the villains tries to tries to do the moral high ground shit when 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 it's a character that before he split up into two people uh, threw humans into cages and turned them into heartless? But remember, Ansem's also a bad guy though. <laughs> it's like, come on. I, I love when that happens. Hold on. Is he in his normal outfit? Wait a minute! Look at the <laughs> I didn't notice these! Are you fucking kidding me? Alright, so, number one. Holy crap. Thank God. Get that cloak off. It looks embarrassing. When you have this. If I can't lick your abs, then you need to adjust your outfit. Seeker of Darkness. Number two. Uh, Riku Replica has been, uh, been norded. And that's interesting. Uh, because we also had the other one. A lot of people were thinking that it was Data Riku, and I still think it is, because it was using the bug blocks. Are there really three fucking Rikus? Are there really two Norded Rikus? Is this happening right now? Uh, rega regardless, is Riku's going to town. There's a price to pay for power. So what? There's no saving. I'm, I'm always a big fan of young Xehanort just going, You're fucked, dude. And watching this trailer, he makes a good case for it. The main three go in. Hold on! Hold, what is this? Okay. You can see the gold eyes, so this is Riku Replica, like, exploding with darkness. And what looks to be Master Xehanort's essence exploding out of him. More heartless. Are you? Axel's like, who is this? You know it's Shion. You know it's Shion because of the Kingdom Kid. It's gotta be that, man. It's gotta be that. If it was, if it's fucking Roxas somehow, but Roxas, the last time we saw him was dual wielding, so who knows? Either way, it's going to rip Axel's heart out because the next scene is just, sorry, you're getting hit with this. We don't got reaction commands anymore. We don't got any of that anymore. Uh, who knows what's happening here, whether he refused to fight Axel or whether he's just ready to go, but he is in berserk mode full on. And then we have this moment. Everyone's getting chained up, which I wonder what's going on with that. Ventus is here in... Oh shit, you can see him react to it, so he's definitely not asleep either. So we have to wonder what's going on here with that. That could be really, uh, really interesting. This could be so many things. This could be uh, the chains of a fully completed new key blade. Uh, this could be um, someone else's special technique. This could be binding them so they can create the ultimate key. Uh, so many things. I just, I don't know, man. But uh, seeing the Ventus is in play at this point is really interesting. And then, God, my audio keeps dying today. Which, which is re really disappointing, because I'm trying to get this done quickly. 
Um, I guess my CPU is exploding while trying to make this video, which uh, tends to happen. At this point, first of all, it looks like Luxord might be the one to take out Mickey Mouse. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I'm about to lose my fucking mind, ladies and gentlemen. At that idea, it better not. I might have thought got the scenes in the wrong order. Let's see. Oh my god! Luxord took out Mickey Mouse! <laughs> Number two, this laser hits, and I actually got emotionally affected watching this again. Look at this beam hit. It nukes this area. Now, my next question, right? What happens? Who tanks it? Donald Duck. Donald Duck's like mag magnets it all to him. And everyone's like, no, what? We get a Donald sacrifice. And instead of it just being knocking Mickey out of the way so the rock can hit Goofy, Donald takes this. This might hit me really hard. Like, no, man. No, man. <laughs> I like Donald Duck. And then, and then Kyra goes to, you know... Goes to protect Axel, which is really cool to see that progression, that that actually happened. Uh, prediction? That beam might be like, I forged the ultimate key, and then they just shoot a beam! <laughs> that could so be awesome! Or it could just be Zemnas going in real hard. Uh, you can see that Donald was taken out already by that point, and a large uh, demon tide comes in. Oh my god, it's so big! Holy shit! That just gave me chills. Oh my god. Uh, Sora's gonna be the only one left. He's put into checkmate. What's his move gonna be? And then, of course, we, uh... We end with, uh, what's coming up here. Once a seat of power for all Keyblade wielders. Here I and my other selves can be one. In Scala et Kylum. So, uh, Scala et Kylum. Uh, I immediately, after watching the trailer, listened to it again and just typed it into translate. It is Latin for the ladder to heaven. The stairway to heaven is the name of this world, basically. Or as they'll, they'll probably keep it, Scala et Kylum. Now, uh, what's interesting about this is this is reminiscent to some of the art. And uh, I've been seeing shit about this floating around, so this might have been in the leaks. But since the leaks were like the first ten minutes of the game... I imagine they show this area in the same way they showed, like, the world that never was. This seems to be similar to something people were talking about in 2014 called Cable Town. And, um... Cable Town, everyone assumed, was, like, the Land of Departures world, which that could be very possible. Is this what Kingdom Hearts is? Is this the post thing for that? Uh, also, another question that maybe we should, uh, maybe we should ask. What are these? Like, the organization then converts into these new armored forms. Like, like, if, is this, like, Xehanort's full effect of, like, alright, you are now fully assimilated. You are now transforming into these forms, and then we're all gonna fuse, and then create Xehanort Prime. These helmets look cool. I've never seen anything like it. I'm so excited to see what this is gonna be. Here I and my other selves can be one. In Scala et Kylo. This is just such a good shot, man. It's so good. It's so, it's so good. And also, Xehanort, Ma Master Xehanort's voice actor, I completely forgot, had changed. Because this guy is, this guy in... One short monologue completely made the role his own. And while uh, Leonard Nimoy was incredible, this is also very, very good. They did a great job. Overall, a fantastic trailer that showed a little bit of everything we want to see. That's gonna, that's gonna do it for this whole... The, the, this whole trailer. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, this is the last little bit we get to see until... I imagine, like, launch trailers and other stuff like that uh, in January. I'm sure we'll get little ads that shows us a little more, but this was the big moment, guys. This was the moment where, where Nomura was allowed to show everything he wanted to show, 
and mixed together, this was a fantastic trailer. Uh, I I am super excited about what we get to see here. Um, predictions: Shion is definitely one of the thirteen. I think uh, bad stuff's gonna happen, and Scala at Kylum looks incredible. Uh, I'm so excited, guys. Uh, just a little over a month away. Thank you so much for watching this analysis and discussion. I will see you guys next time.